song. Thank you, ladies. If you'd like to turn with me in your Bible, the first scripture lesson this morning is coming to us from 1 Kings chapter 18. We're going to be reading verses 41 through 45. And Elijah said to Ahab, Go, eat and drink, for it is the sound of a heavy rain. So Ahab, Ahab went off to eat and drink. Elijah climbed to the top of Carmel, bent down to the ground, and put his face between his knees. Go and look toward the sea, he told his servant, and he went up and looked. There's nothing there, he said. Seven times Elijah said, Go back. The seventh time the servant reported, A cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. So Elijah said, Go and tell Ahab, Hitch up your chariot, and go down before the rain stops you. Meanwhile, the sky grew black with clouds. The wind rose. A heavy rain came on, and Ahab rode off to Jezreel. Now if you turn with me to James chapter 5. Another part of this story. In verses 17 and 18, it says, Elijah was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crop. Praise God.
And Elijah said, Go up, say to Ahab, Prepare your chariot and go down, lest the rain stops you. Elijah knew this was my son. That was the sign. There was a little rain cloud. He had prayed. He had waited. He had not given up. He persevered. He got on his knees. He put his head between his knees. And he prayed to the Lord God Almighty, who he knew could send the rain. Yes? He could send the rain. Elijah knew he could send the rain. Did it matter if he didn't answer him the first time? No. He didn't give up. He didn't say, oh, well, that didn't work. You know what's wrong with us Christians today? And I say us because I'm including myself. Is that we give up way too easy. We give up. If we don't see it, if it doesn't look like anything happened, we say, oh, well, that must not have been the Lord's will. Well, how do you know unless you pray it through, unless you seek him out? Way back when I first started in this kind of uh, call, I'm not going to call it a vocation because it is not a vocation. It is a call. This call by the Lord, there are many things that I would pray about. I prayed about the first church I went to. It didn't turn out real great. I could have given up. I could have said, well, Lord, that just must not have been your will. But instead, I went to the Lord and I said, I feel this call. I know it has to be. So what, Lord, what? You have to push through what you see with the naked eye. You cannot look with these eyes. You have to get in to the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and look and see what is happening in the spiritual realm. We are, we are, we are three-part beings. We are body, soul, and spirit. And our spirit is so, we just completely ignore it most of the time. We're more worried about our bodies, which I understand. When you have pain, you have pain. So you think about it. Or we get into our, our soul, which is our mind, our will, and our emotions. How's that working for you? And then we get in, if we could just get in to the Spirit. If we could just get in to the Holy Spirit. And have the Holy Spirit speak to our spirit. And give us wisdom from on high. Don't get bogged down in thinking with your own mind. It will deceive you. We have to listen to the Holy Spirit. Elijah knew his God. Do you know your God? Do you know him? For real? Do you know him? You know... Just like what they were saying. Do you know my Jesus? And how long has it been since you went to the Lord? Since you prayed to the Lord? Since you got on your knees before the Lord and said, help me. I am lost. I don't know which way to turn. Show me, Lord. How long has that been? Do you know that he loves you? I mean, he loves you. He wants to show you the way. But we get into our own stuff and we forget. We give up. Too, too easy. That's what I saw in Elijah. That's what I saw in his life. And he lived for Christ, for the Lord. So then I went into James. In um, 5.17, and we're going to talk a little bit. I want, I want you to hear what this says. Elijah was a man. Listen, Elijah was a man just like us. He had a nature just like us. He fought the old sinful nature just like us. He thought his mind, his will, and emotions just like us. 
The reason that he succeeded was he overrode that with his trust in God. And he didn't give up when he prayed. He did not give up. It says Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently. How many of you pray fervently? Huh? I, you know what's like fervently, with a fever, with a passion. Like, Lord, shut Planned Parenthood down in the name of Jesus. And don't be afraid to come against the powers and the principalities because Jesus Christ has already won. What are we afraid of? It's time for the church to get awake and understand that we are to be praying fervently for these dear ones. Fervently for the teachers. Fervently for the unborn. Why has, and I'm going to pick on Planned Parenthood, why have they been able to succeed? And why does a, a, a godly organization like CareNet struggle? Because we've given up praying for them. We don't even think about it. And these women and men at CareNet, they are on the front line of that. And there's a line going into Planned Parenthood of these young women that are going to be lied to and it will change their life forever. And you get maybe one or two a week at CareNet. What is that? That is a complete lack of prayer on the church's turf. We have forgotten what we are to be about. We are to be about the Father's business. Didn't Jesus tell his own mother that when they, he let, got left behind, when they were traveling home? He says, I have to be about my Father's business. Are you about your Father's business? Think about it. Or is it all about you and your troubles? And you're this and you're this. I get it. I got my own troubles. You want to hear about them? I tell you, it's a list. But we have to be about our Father's business. Do not let Satan rob you of being about your Father's business. Don't lay. Don't lay in depression and despair and defeat. Do not lay there because it will become worse and worse and worse. Get up and do something. It's something that I tell people when they come to me and they say they're depressed or they're in despair or whatever. I say, you know what? Get up and do something. Help somebody. Go visit somebody that maybe is worse off than you are. Go talk to somebody. Pray for somebody. Make it your mission and your goal that it's not about you. It's about Jesus the Christ. Everybody has problems. Everybody has stuff. I feel like I'm very loud. Am I loud? I'm trying to. Um, I don't want to blast anybody out here. Take your hearing aids out. <laughs> um, but that's, that's the truth. <coughs> so it said, uh, and he prayed fervently. Okay, I want you to remember that word this week. Fervently. Fervently. Heartfelt. Powerful. Passionate. Prayer. When you go to the Lord, let him know you mean it. Let him know you mean it that it might not rain. And then for and for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain. And the earth bore its fruit. I want you to know something. So my little, little daughter last night sent me something because I was running on empty. Um, I want to read something to you. 
that she sent me, and I think it was powerful, and I want you to hear it, okay? Just listen. Elijah did all that, but something else happened, and I want you to hear it. After three and a half years, all right, the earth bore its fruit. Think about that a minute, just a minute, okay? The crops grew. After three and a half years of drought, dry, nothing, no water, everything dried up. If the crops grew when the rain came, that implies there were seeds in the ground. Do you hear? This suggests that the farmers were still sowing seeds in the dust. They kept planting, believing the rains would eventually come. Do you hear, church? Don't stop planting just because it looks dry. Don't stop planting seeds just because you're not seeing anything happen. Do you hear? That's what's going on in the church. That's why the church has become powerless. Where are the healings? Where are people being set free? Where are people coming to the altar in repentance for their sin and turning to Jesus? Where are the churches that are waking up? They're coming. And we are one. And we are one. It says, I don't know about you, but prayer can sometimes feel like this, like this for me. Like I am sowing seeds in the desert. But I have learned that often when it feels like nothing is happening physically, there is plenty that is happening spiritually. Believe it. Believe that when your prayers go forth, you may not see it. The land may look dry. It may look like nothing is happening, but it is. Because God is moving on your behalf. You may be getting the same report from the doctor. You may be feeling the same ache and pain that you felt for a year. You may, there may be th uh, situations in your family that the person is still the same as they were uh, two years ago, ten years ago. Do not give up. If the seed is planted, the Lord will send the rain eventually. We do not know when, but that does not mean we stop planting. That does not mean we stop, even if I can't see it yet. Personally, I want to have seeds in the ground when the rain comes. When God's blessing comes, will you have seed in the ground? Will you have been praying fervently for this or that? For this person, for this healing, for this sickness, all the things that slow us down, that we settle. We settle. We settle. The church has settled for less than what God has ordained it to, set, to do and to be, especially in the days we're living in now. Do you understand the days that we're living in now? They are evil, evil, evil. And the church has to be better, better, better. We have to be in love with Jesus so deeply, so strong, so fervently, that when we pray, we know God hears us, we may have to wait, we may have to go back, we may have to go back, we may have to go back, but he hears. He hears. <clears throat> One of the biggest lies of the enemy is to wish, whisper in your ear that he does not care about you and he does not hear. Because when the ground lays dry, you believe the voice of the enemy. We are not to listen to the voice of the enemy. We are lit to listen to the voice of truth that tells you this story. The truth of the gospel. That's what we're to be listening to. My prayer is 
that even when our prayers don't seem to be making a visible distance, difference, we would keep on sowing anyway, trusting the one who brings the rain. That's an amen. amen. I'm telling you, church, we have to keep trusting the one that brings the rain. The other day, my father-in-law and I were sitting, we were talking about how dry it was. And of course, he's 91 years old. He's seen this before. It's no big, no biggie, you know. And I said, yeah, I said, I have to wonder when it's going to rain. Everything's drying up. And da, 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 da. My garden dry, is drying up. And he says, well, the Lord knows we need the rain. He'll send it. Don't he know? He knows exactly what you need. He'll send it. Just hang on. Don't get into unbelief. Just hang on to his promises. Know that what he says is true. It might be rough right now. It might be a rough patch you're in right now. But hang on. Because God is faithful and he's true. And he sees and he knows what you're going through. And he is going to bring you out of it. Pray fervently to the one that knows and sees. Don't give up. Don't give up, church. Don't give up on your dreams. <laughs> Don't give up on them. The question I wrote down as I was reading on this was, do we believe in the power of Jesus' name? I want you to ask yourself that question. Do you truly believe in the power of Jesus' name? When you say Jesus, do you think power? When you say, say Jesus, do you think strength? When you say Jesus, do you say fervent? passionate, king of kings, lord of lords, or have we allowed the world and the church itself to water Jesus down to this man that walked the earth, and he, he may or may not have done what he said, and did he really mean what he said? Come on, it's time we get over that. It's time we rise above that. Put that junk away. Do not compromise with the world or the woke church because that's what's going on. Satan's infiltrating the church and he's making us think that he's not, not, not that big of a deal. And we can take the word of God and we can twist it however we want to twist it. Really? Come on now. That just drives me nuts when I hear that. Churches are dying because they have invited death in the door because sin leads to death and that's what happens that's you're going to see it more you're going to see it more and the Lord is raising up his remnant even as I'm standing here right now he is raising up his remnant just like when he said there were hundreds he's raising up a remnant don't give up if you look around and look dry, know the rain is coming. Know that Christ is coming again. Know that we're going to meet him again. And know that we are going to give an account for everything that we do. Amen. Amen. So we can't worry about what this church is doing over here or what that group is doing over there. We have to keep our eyes straight ahead, just like Elijah did. He couldn't worry if people thought he was nuts to go up there and pray for rain. Noah couldn't worry about if people thought he was crazy for they say 75 years of building the ark. He couldn't worry about it. God told him to do this, and he was going to do it. What has God told you to do that you are worried about what somebody's going to say or think of you? What has God told you to do? I'm telling you, he's speaking to each one of us. None of us are exempt. You can sit here and think, well, he don't really, he ain't worried about me because I really don't have any gifts, or I don't, I don't know, I'm not, I don't know. And I'm, I'm not, and I'm really not worried about him. Sorry. Each 
each and every person was created in their mother's womb and he saw it. Each of you. Each of you. And you were born for this time, in this place. You were born for this. You were born to follow Jesus. You were born with a purpose to follow Jesus, to be with him, to walk with him, talk with him. That old song, I come to the garden alone, when the dew is still on the roses, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me that I am his own. That's who we are. There were places that Jesus went that he could not do any mighty works because of their what? Unbelief. Unbelief. There were places, towns, that he went. He couldn't do anything because people didn't believe it. The Son of God came into their midst and they looked at him and said, hmm, who's this guy? Isn't he the carpenter's son? Wasn't Mary his mother? <laughs> who does he think he is? And they did not believe. I'm telling you, it has our faith we need to build up our holy faith in who God is. And if we don't, we're going to get taken down. We've got to believe. We've got to know that we know that we know who Jesus the Christ is. With every fiber of, him, of our being, we have to know that he sees us and he knows. We cannot give up. We cannot lay down. We cannot roll over. We cannot... Say, Satan, oh well, you know, he's got the world and we may as well just let it go. He will not have our children. Stand up and say, he will not have our children. We will take back the land that the enemy has robbed from us. We'll take back the years that the locusts have eaten. He will restore our children back to us. Pray it with power. Pray it with fervent uh, um, strength. And know that God hears you. No more. No more is there time for this little pit. Oh, Lord, help them. Help us. Help us, Lord. Know who you are in Jesus the Christ. Elijah knew who he was. And he knew his God. And he knew that his God heard him. He knew even though he didn't see it, he sent his servant out seven times to look and to see. There was nothing. He came out. There's nothing. There, there's nothing. Do you really think there's going to be anything, Elijah? I think you're nuts. Do you really think God hears you? Go again. Okay, I told you. Like I said the last time, there's nothing. Then he comes back the seventh time with a little cloud. And that's all Elijah needed. And he knew his God had heard him. Hold on to the little things that God gives you. Watch and see. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Do not be discouraged, church. Do not be defeated, church. Do not walk around with your head hanging down like we have lost the war because we have not. The battle is already won. Jesus is Lord. He is King of Kings. And he will prevail. Amen. Amen. So the girl. church needs to stand up and know that Jesus has our back. He goes before us. He is our rear guard. And he walks with us. And there's no devil in hell that can rob us of our children unless we allow it. Amen. So rise up and take back what the enemy has stolen. Take back the years. Church, it's time. It's past time for us.
us to see who we are. Rise up and be like Elijah. And when we pray, we pray a fervent prayer. Amen.